uh, and welcome to MachineCon. Uh, my name is Piyush, Piyush Dubey from the math company or MathCo. Uh, I joined the company about one year ago and uh, since then, if there's one ecosystem partner that I've seen uh, to be very active, to be very useful, that is AIM. Uh, and I'm so happy that AIM has finally found its way in the US as well. Uh, we are a small community and uh, it's a great platform for us to meet with each other, to talk to each other. Uh, I know we have similar interests. So congratulations to AIM for making this move and uh, all the best to Bhaskar and everybody in the team. Uh, Katie, uh, when she spoke, she, she talked about a uh, few people and very few were left standing in the end. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is, as the math company, we have been working with few of those leaders and for all the rest of us who are sitting uh, to figure out what is it that some of the initial use cases can be uh, beyond the hype, what is it that we can do. So over the next 15 minutes, I'll be talking about that. Little bit about the math company. Uh, we were founded in 2016, uh, headquartered in Chicago and Bangalore. Uh, more than 60 Fortune 500 clients, uh, full stack AI analytics teams, consulting, data engineering, data analytics, adoption advisory. Uh, and uh, of course, we are a leader in the AIM SPEMA which is the penetration and maturity uh, quadrant for analytics, also a leader in the AIM SPEMA for data engineering. And our purpose is to empower every decision maker in global enterprises to own and activate intelligence. Now that's an important aspect of MathCo. We believe that as analytics and AI leaders, you need to own the data products that you, that you, that you build for your enterprises. Uh, there's no need to pay the economic rent uh, on and on uh, for the products, for those dashboards, for those visualizations. Uh, and so we have developed a low code platform called Codex with which enterprises can develop their own data products and they're theirs to keep. Uh, we at Mathco believe there's so many problems in this world to solve that we can, we don't have to keep charging the license or IP for the data products that we develop and we move on to solve new, new problems for our clients. So own, owning and activating intelligence is an important aspect of it. And uh, I couldn't have come here on July 21st today uh, to talk about the hype and not talk about Barbenheimer. Right? That's, that's the biggest hype around today. Uh, and in fact, at the AMC theater, just on the other side of the park, I, the Barbenheimer is going on today. And, and so I was wondering if I should do that, but then I thought that there's definitely some information that all the geeky and nerdy uh, audience here will have. And so we did a small little research on Gen AI as to what will happen, and I'll talk about that towards the end of this presentation. Uh, so more on Barbenheimer, uh, but I hope you have all decided, is it going to be Barbie and Oppenheimer or Oppenheimer and Barbie? I think that's the biggest question to answer today. <laughs> So let's talk about the AI opportunity. Now, across the world, for all the information, uh, if you look at the x-axis, the human knowledge and expertise across various fields, and then at some level, AI uh, gets better than human. So for example, when it comes to chess, we know that computers will play better chess than human. Similarly, for calculation, maybe a little bit getting there with driving, writing, painting, flying, coding, and seeing. Computer vision, it's, it's growing. Now, uh, across the real opportunity, the way we see it is in the enterprise world. What happens when all this technology gets into all the sectors that are there? And we believe that at different levels of maturity, different industries are working. And it is this space that math cooperates in. To build the enterprise AI, to build the AI opportunity to bring it to the enterprises and get it to the same level across all. So at some point in time, we believe that the possible AI evolution will look somewhat like this, where every organization, every enterprise and every industry will have AI performing better than the humans. 
uh, whether it is the AGI, whether it is artificial super intelligence or it is artificial narrow intelligence within a particular area like uh, healthcare or retail or, or retail media for that matter. And, and it, is, it is in that area where Gen AI comes in. So before we go forward, let's just see what exactly Gen AI is. And I've used the Gartner definition for this. Uh, the generative AI is the broad set of technologies that generate that generate data, that generate images, that generate videos, or any other kind of uh, data. And within that, the foundation models are the ones, and there is a typical foundation model transformer architecture, which has become more popular because it is more accurate. Uh, they are the ones that form the foundation models. A type of foundation model is the large language model. And those large language models basically use large amounts of data and uh, basically the textual data, and they, 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 can, they can create, they can generate uh, original artifacts out of that. And within that, a small field is ChatGPT, which of course is where the hype is started, first of all. That ChatGPT is the one which, which is creating, basically using the same LLMs for the chat, uh, for, for basically a conversation purpose. And so we'll talk about all of them and we'll see how exactly that, that plays. But let's look at the value chain. So it starts with the hardware. NVIDIA is the most popular. Most of these applications require tremendous computing power. So NVIDIA does that. Uh, the cloud platforms, the usual suspects, all three of them then form the cloud. That's when the magic starts to uh, happen. The, the closed source models, like, and actually it's, 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 it's a strange that OpenAI is actually the, the most popular closed source model. It was a wonderful way in which OpenAI started as a research company. That's why they could build it so quickly, so, so, so fast, and then they closed it, right? And so, so the closed source models like OpenAI or BARD or the open source models like Dolly uh, from Databricks. Uh, and typically you could actually make applications as an enterprise on, on these open or closed source models, but you would typically need some uh, application enablers the frameworks which form an abstraction on top of that layer, like the Langchain or Llama Index, or uh, fine cone kind of vector databases, which because there is terabytes of data that you are using to, to build that model, you would normally index it and then query that index rather than putting this entire thing on the cloud. Uh, and so uh, vector databases like fine cone, and with those enablers, you can create your own workflows in the enterprise. Uh, they can be based on your open AI or they can be based on the open source models like Dolly. And we'll talk about all of them as we go forward. So some of our clients, what are the options for them? So our clients are typically starting with pre-built uh, and hosted model APIs. Now these are the closed source models like open AI. Uh, easy to use, uh, just download the API and get started like just, just, just create something. But the next, uh, and, and so it's, it's uh, the upfront cost is low, but the maintenance cost because you pay, by, pay per use. So if you are growing, if you're growing fast, if you have too many use cases, then you will possibly reach at a point where it will be difficult for you to continue to scale with that. Uh, then comes the open source model. Uh, upfront cost is met because uh, at, the, at the medium range, you do have an upfront cost to download that, to, to, to get the cloud infrastructure, to maintain it after that. And then of course, if you are a huge enterprise and you foresee that you do want to uh, invest in this technology for next few years, then the option is to build your LM from scratch and do that. Of course, the, both the upfront cost and the running steady state cost will be higher, but the security and few other things are better in that. So let's see how exactly the companies are moving in this value chain then. Most of the clients that we work with is start with an out-of-the-box LLM. Now, we use it. All of us use it, right? Our kids use it. Uh, very interestingly, I figured that uh, the use of ChatGPT for the first time went down in July since it was launched. And when you peel the onion, you find it's actually the kids because their schools were closed. So kids are not using ChatGPT anymore. And that's how the usage went down. And I'm sure it'll go back up and after, after the Labor Day when the schools open. But then we are all using it, whether it is for brainstorming, whether it is for debugging codes, that's a good way to start. But very soon you'll run out, the, run out of, I, in fact, uh, even though AIM team is here, so I should not be saying it, uh, but I'll just share. Uh, 
prompt engineering, for example. Uh, my team fills the Pema, for example, or the Gartner Magic Quadrant or Forrester Wave. Many of them are repetitive questions. So we have developed an in-house tool where we just put those questions and it looks at all the last three years of responses that we have given to those questions and gives us the first draft. And those drafts are really very good, right? Now, something like that is not possible with an out-of-the-box LLM because you have to feed the three years of responses into that model for that model to be able to say, what is MathCo's strategy over the next two years? That's the question that AIM wants us to answer on the Gen AI Pema. And so it looks at all the, so it, it has to be very context sensitive and that's where prompt engineering comes. When you have tremendously huge amount of data, that's when you have to index that large data. And then you have to use the, the vector databases and so that's the next level. Typically most of the enterprises, especially at this stage when the technology is growing, that is a good place for us to stop, right? But if you really wanna go complex after that and if you really want to see value from that, then fine tuning your own LLMs is the way to go. And that's when you have domain specific codes. For example, it could be uh, something on the drug development for a pharma company, right? And it's, it's, it's very specific to that. There is no way a chat GPT will be able to answer that. So that's how we are helping our clients to build that kind of uh, hierarchy to get into the uh, fine tuning of LLMs. So how do you start? Uh, you start with a use case. I think that's the first step. Uh, what are the use cases? There are many different use cases and, and we are working with our clients to identify the best use cases in their organizations for their maturity to get started. Then you create a proof of concept. A uh, best way to create a proof of concept is to create with a closed source API based LLM like a chat GPT uh, or BARD and create there. And then get into a scale and production. In fact, in one case we found that it is easier and cheaper to use GPT-3 for the use case that was identified than GPT-4. And these costs do, do add up very soon, right? Within three months you will find that, hey, we had like a quarter million of budget and we are actually burning it faster than what we thought we would be burning because, because people are asking questions. People are generating more data from that. And so, so we figured that actually GPT-3 will be cheaper and better for that. So that's when you scale and you go to the next level. Some use cases, generation. Generation is the easiest one, right? So whether it is uh, uh, content writing assistance, code generation, uh, the GitHub Copilot is a great example of that, uh, or uh, the synthesis. Our clients are asking, saying that, hey, here are all the reports that we have seen on responsible AI. Right? Just give me a synthesis in four, 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 four pages, let's say. And so, so we, can, we can help them synthesizing those, uh, generate insights from dashboards. Uh, at the bottom, for example, the middle one, the automated insights, you will see uh, this, is, this is a screen from our, our low-code platform codex where we can just say, hey, uh, just give us the summary of what's happening in this slide. Right? And, and, and the LLM will create a quick summary and uh, with, with a nice feedback from, from one of the engineers or from an executive who can rate that finding, saying that I have reviewed it and this is a good finding. Uh, answering questions, uh, so what's the regional, uh, what's the sales for Arkansas and uh, going to be in uh, Q2? And that's what LLM can do. Extracting information is a wonderful use case. Uh, there are contracts, the legal teams are looking for uh, indemnity clauses or liability uh, clause. So you just feed all the contracts for and say where exactly are we in a liability which is which is not as much or not as good as we would like like it to be. And so you can find those risks in those those contracts very easily and very quickly. So extracting information or the text categorization. In in fact, even including new categories that you have to create. So we are working with sales and marketing teams, the customer service teams, product development teams, information technology teams, especially when it comes to synthetic data, uh, to build that synthetic data for the use of LLMs, the legal teams that I talked about, uh, the contracts, uh, all these. But I think the suggestion that we are giving to our clients is that use with an internal application or combine it with a human oversight. It's very easy for ChatGP to, to come up with a mail an email for all your 10,000 customers, but that's not a great use case. 
we normally suggest that please use the LLMs to create the first draft that an executive can then use to do that. Especially at this stage, uh, we have not come to a point where we can use autonomous agents to do a complete value chain of, a, of, an, of an activity or a task. And that is something that I want to talk about as we go forward. That's where we believe the world is progressing. Uh, Krishna talked about potential pitfalls. Uh, hallucination and uh, the, the, that's, the bias is a huge thing. Uh, we, we, we are all seeing the whole uh, instances of hallucination with the LLMs. Uh, therefore, it is important that we select use cases where 100% accuracy is not needed, right? It is, it is very easy and it is, it is possible for chat GPT uh, for you to, to feed all the patient records in the LLM and say, what's the best prescription for this patient? Uh, it'll definitely come up with some nice responses, but that's, it's an extreme example, but not a, not a great way to use it. Uh, data privacy, it has gotten a lot better with Microsoft coming at OpenAI. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is a lot more, you know what exactly you're getting into. But as an enterprise, you do need to know that this data is going to be stored in the closed source LLM for some time. That, 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 that knowledge, that acknowledgement is important for you to have. Uh, and finally, of course, the cost. The closed source models go by pay per use and the open source models will have a higher upfront cost and a maintenance cost, but possibly will be more secure in the long run. Uh, some accelerators that Mathco has, which can help you create the templates for uh, consulting for a strategy, which can help you for foundation, for tooling, uh, something that we can help you. And uh, the, 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 the beauty of uh, LLMs will come when it goes into the entire structure, right from the foundation of engineering to, to the intelligence, the analytics layer, to the business value layer where the executives use it, and then the CXOs use it, right? And imagine for all the activities, accessibility, recommendations, execution, and planning, if you could use that. That's, that's the level five of this, so to say. And that's, that's where we are seeing, and of course, no, there, there are no enterprises which are at that level yet, it's a new technology but that's where we are helping our clients go. So like I promised, I land with the Barbenheimer. Uh, we, we looked at uh, the opportunities and, and what, is, what is happening here with the hype. Uh, so you know Barbie is winning, by the way, uh, both in terms of mention and reach, but then please don't forget, there are millions of kids who are searching Barbie without the movie as well. So at least personally, I believe that is, that is also happening here. Uh, and in terms of sentiment, both of them are falling down. My personal prediction is that within one month, you will see Oppenheimer is at least one point higher in the IMDb rating than Barbie. Uh, maybe we should, we, should, we should meet once again after one month and see whether it was right or not. I'll end with this last slide. We have a Gen AI workshop uh, that we work with our clients for. Uh, if anyone is interested, we can plan that. You just have to scan this QR code. It will lead you to a nice little page where with a small information, you can, you can, you can just set up this workshop. And uh, I will personally be involved with every single workshop along with some of our experts. During the day today, we have my colleagues, Sean, who is the Chief Growth Officer at Mathco, and Russell, who is the Head of Business Development. So please do come by and look us up. Uh, very happy to talk to you and uh, happy to help you own your intelligence. Thank you.